In this tutorial, we're going to make an American hat, just like you see here, where we're going to change the colors within the brim, and so every uh, other line is a different color, and then we're going to switch to the blue. If you want to do a fancy star like this, just go on to um, Mikey's Mail in the YouTube, and just look up American Flag Star, and you'll find the tutorial for that. Now this is crochet, this is loom knitting. Now in order to stay organized, I always uh, have a worksheet, and this worksheets are available at mikeysmail.com and it's just a checklist and I just check off as I go around the loom so that's what I do and let's get started. The first thing you're going to need is an empty pen and I call these a styler pens there's no official name all it is is it's a regular pen and I've just taken out the insides and what you just need to do is just fold the material just in your hand just start feeding it into the one side and using a crochet hook like I have one here from Hook and Mama we just want to shove it down inside the pen and just let it come out the other side. So to get this project started we need to start off with a slip knot. So let's go around your finger twice and back over the forward and then the back up and push. And now there's always a knob that's on these things and so then this knob here represents every time we're going to turn around. So we want to pay attention to where that is and uh, I am right-handed naturally so I'm just going to work toward the left. If you're left-handed you might work toward the right. So the peg is in the center here. It's in between the two so I choose the one that is on the left-hand side because I'm going to work toward the left. Now what we're going to do is that we're going to be using two colors just like you see here. I'll try to keep that and uh, what I want to do is I want to get both colors established on the same line on the first time around but let's uh, not jump ahead too far let's get our red started so this is a twi uh, twisted knit stitch so you're going to come on the interior just like so and you're just going to go up into the next one and around and then back in and this is called E wrapping because what's happening is that the material is forming the letter E around the pegs on the interior so we're just going to wrap this now you can do you don't need a, in, a pen to do this but it really does uh, speed up your work uh, quite immensely and this pen that I'm using right now it does not slide in between the pegs very well so but ideally it would be better if the material could go partially the way down so we we'll get right to the last peg and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to let this sit down just like so and now I'm going to grab my white and I already have it fed in here off camera let's do another slip knot and I want to feed my white onto this this particular row that I'm doing right now the casting on you will not see this this will be the part of the project that's in the inside of the hat so what I want to do these are called the, it's called the gauge and the gauge is the distance between the pegs and this kind of idea in order to get this beautiful quality you actually have to wrap the loom twice so it requires double wrapping. So what I'm going to do is on the very first one, we're not going to double wrap with one color, but we're actually going to double wrap with both colors. So we're just one color of each for the first rotation. So once we get by this first rotation, uh, sorry, once we get by the casting on, then we're going to pay attention to um, making sure that we're only using one color or the other throughout the entire brim. Now the brim is only uh, rows of 10. So there's only 10 rows of it, so once we get beyond the 10, then we just go back into the normal hat using a regular blue color. So you can see I'm not really, I'm just wrapping it, I'm not really paying attention. Again, you're not going to see this, so you're not, you don't have to worry about the white being on top of the red. So what we want to do now is just hold these strings solid, and now just kind of push down in between. So you can actually probably let that go, depending on how you're doing it. I never ever loom knit on a table so it can it can be quite awkward if you're loom knitting uh, in a different way just like myself so so we're just going to work our way down we want to push these pretty well to the bottom uh, because we want to start our next line so this is half casted on so we're not quite finished so why not just continue along with the white so we're just let's rewrap with the white again and again this doesn't really matter at this point because you can't see it. Okay, and we get right to the back one, so we're just going to let it sit down. And now we're going to take the red and now wrap the, the entire loom again.
I, uh, in the original of the hat that you see, I actually never did it this way and I found that it was a lot harder to make the brim uh, because the colors of when you go to fold over the brim are not that obvious. So I would strongly recommend that you start both of the, the yarns just like you are right now. So now that we have finished our wrapping, we're just going to hold this. We're going to lean up and sew, making sure it's still in the camera. Let's see if that's still there. So what we want to do now is take the bottom. So this is the last one that I wrapped. So we want to take the bottom and pick it up and put it over the peg. So we just want to work our way backward. And I always use my loom upside down because I think it's a lot easier to put your hook in and then be able to uh, pull towards you and pull down. And um, I'm just going to stop the video right here. I'll pick it up in a second. I just want to change the lighting. I don't like the lighting, so stand by. So I'm now continuing just so now continuing just to work my way around. And uh, sorry, but uh, I just couldn't see very well. And uh, I think that you guys were getting some shadows as well. So we're just taking the bottoms and just putting them over. And once we are done this rotation, this will be row number one, which is your casting on. So we only have nine more to go for this. So the hat that you see in the background there, hopefully you can see that hat, just like so. It's The lines are actually solid colors. So um, what we can just do is we can just choose which colors would be best to start with. So you can either choose red or you can choose white. It doesn't really matter. See how I'm using my thumb to kind of push it back once it's underneath? It's a lot easier to do it that way than it is to come back and have to redo everything. So that check off number one on your sheet. And if you have a sheet there, check number one off. And then we're going to start row number two. Okay, for the second row, I'm going to start off with the red. So you can, uh, you can go either way. But uh, what we're going to just do, because of the gauge, I also uh, told you we need to double wrap. And double wrapping basically means that we go around the loom twice. And uh, because the, you know, this is just exactly like making socks or nylons and the size of the peg matters on the quality of the thickness of the knit. So these are really thick, so therefore you'll need double. So let's go around again. And I'm only going red for this rotation. Now you could cut your strings in between doing the reds and whites, but why bother? You're not going to be able to see it and also cut strings can add potential to something coming apart down the road. I am not a fan of cut strings at all. It really drives me crazy. So if I can get away with it, I will. So now the red is all wrapped up. So we're just going to work our way just like we did before, taking the bottom over. And now you'll see all of the stitches churning to red. So what you're going to just do is just go around all the way. And I don't think that you need to see me do this entire row, but just continuing along just to putting the, the bottoms over. And what we're going to do now is on the next row, we're going to pick up white. So if you want to, on your list, I did one to 10. I wrote one to 10 and I wrote down the colors that I was going to put beside it so that you can pay attention to that. So um, that's how I know what I'm doing. And so we'll see you in a few minutes or a few seconds then when I change over. Okay, so I finished off the red and you're going to notice that the strings are starting to tangle and they will do that because of the way that you're rotating it when you work with it. So the easiest way just to do is just to rotate your loom back to where it was so that your yarn stays untangled. Now we want to make sure the red pops out just like so of the loom and we're going to let it sit and now we're going to grab the white and now we're going to wrap up the for this particular row we're going to wrap white around twice so we're going to double wrap white so this is how we get our white in there and the reason why we put the red on the outside of the thing is that if you leave it on the inside it's got to come out of the loom somewhere and if you trap it and it comes out of the loom somewhere else here you are going to totally mess up your project so you might as well let it sit where it finishes this was the last peg and you might as well let it sit on the outside anyway in a controlled fashion than, than leaving uncontrolled so I'm going to go around twice for the double wrap 
And if you want the instructions for this, I have it already written down on mikeysmail.com. And uh, you can go in there if you feel like you want to uh, read your directions. And uh, this peg that, or, uh, loom that I'm using, I think it's so well used that some of the pegs are starting to come loose. And if, if you notice a, a peg is a little bit taller than the rest, it's better to push it down right at the time than it is to wait for it to pop off. So we're going to flip up and again taking the reds now and putting them over the white. So again you don't need to see me do this entire row. Just This is how simple this is. So this is crazy. So once you finish this row, this will be row number 3 done out of number 10, out of 10. So what I'm going to do is that you're going to switch back to red. So let's fast forward the camera. We'll switch it back to red. And then I'm going to leave you to actually get to row number not, uh, 10. But don't start number 10. Wait for me. And what we'll do is we'll learn how to fold up the brim and uh, create that and install our blue for that pattern. So I'll see you in a second. We're back at the start. Let's rotate our loom and untangle our yarn, leaving the red now down. And Sorry, leaving the... I apologize, leaving the white down and then picking up the red. And the reason why I'm kind of struggling because I'm looking at the pegs here and they're white so the next row must be red because if you're flipping uh, a white over white you know that you haven't been alternating like you're supposed to. So we're going to double wrap this bad boy like we've done the rest and um, this is so simple it's not even funny. So I'm going to leave you to do uh, up to row number 10. Do not start row number 10. Um, we're going to finish off with row number 9 and then we're going to um, show you what to do with the brim. Uh, part of uh, all number 10 is is making the brim and making sure that um, we start our blue properly. And there is a really uh, great technique that I can show you how to make a brim that's absolutely beautiful and it's going to make your friends cry if you give it to them, I guess. <laughs> okay, maybe I'm exaggerating a little bit, but uh, we'll see you back here. And again, just double wrap everything like you have been, flip the bottom over the top. And then make sure you're recording how many rows you are going. So this, when I'm done this one, this will be row number I've four. I've now just finished off number eight. And I've forgotten that because the rows are like consistent, so they're just red, white, red, white, is that on the end of row number eight, whatever color that you have for number eight has to be casted off. And so basically red was the one that is number eight for me. So I'm just going to cut it. I cut it about the length of the distance across the loom and we can take that off and uh, cast off all I need to do is just tie a little knot just like so and wrap it around that same peg so that the red matches. See the reason for that is that if I wait till number nine when I go to cast off, if I cast it off the red then I would be putting a red on top of a white therefore it would be shown on the outside of your material. So you want to make sure it matches and leave your straggler, that doesn't matter. So this is row number nine and we're going to be finishing off then with the white and um, we're just go around as normal and we want to cast off with the white as soon as you're done with the white as well. So uh, we'll just wrap, double wrap twice and then we'll just uh, knit and then I'll meet you back row here. number nine. So what I want to do now is cast off. So we're just going to cut that white and again just like we did before we just want to tie a knot like so and then slip it over the peg. And again the same reason as before is that the cut we want the colors to match on the other side so you want the white to be with the white. Just like so. So now it's time to begin our next process and we're going to be using blue obviously for the red, white and blue theme. So where is my end We want to feed us into our Styler pen and I have like 20 of these things and I should really get them all ready. But just feeding them in using my Hook and Mama uh, wooden crochet hook and I'm only using this because it actually um, really does slide in between. And if you're looking for custom made uh, crochet hooks, Hook and Mama is the way to go. So let's uh, create our slip knot, just like so, just wrapping around your finger twice, back over the forward and then pushing up. And now basically we have finished off with the pegs on the, the one side of the, of the, we have finished off with the, on this side, so we want to continue to do our same theming of going toward the left. So I want to put my 
my blue onto the left hand side of that. So if you're left handed you might be working in the other direction. So um, even though this is a heavy gauge, what we're doing now is that we're forming the brim. So we only want to wrap this with the blue once. And the reason for that is that this blue that we're doing right now is not visible on the outside of the hat, which is ideal because what's going to happen now is that you're establishing the blue to be in the pattern. So then when you actually do fold up the brim, the brim is going to be totally ready and totally seamless just like you see it there. And this is the secret to it. And there's a specific order on how you're to knit in order to maintain that. So now that we just did that, I'm just going to set that aside. And now what we're going to do is start folding up the brim. So these stragglers, we're just going to let them sit on top of the material on the inside. And then what we're going to just do is unfold, like just unroll it. And basically the pegs, you can see the knit of the pegs all the way down. And basically you're looking for the two colors that are on the bottom of each one of these items. The interesting thing is that once you actually see it, then you'll always get it every time. So what we want to do is once you get the first one done, just like so, just like on the bottom, once you get the first one done, you put, there'll be red and white because you cast it on using the red and white, is that you'll see the next one, it's just popping right out in front of you. Just like so. So all you need to just do is do red and white, putting them onto the pegs, just like so. And you can already see that the forming of the brim is already happening just by this particular fold. And this kind of fold you can do on like Christmas stockings or, or any other project where you want a nice starting of a project. Like a hat or something. I don't know if you hear this, but there is a fly bouncing off my studio lighting. And my studio lighting is about two feet wide on both sides of my table right now and it's like a ping pong. So we're just going to continue along. If you want to push it down you can. I really enjoy this part of, I don't know why, but I just totally love the, the brim process. I think it's just so amazing. And also too is like if you think about it, uh, with the baby's uh, loom hat, this is row number 10. And basically the top of the hat only has 13, so you're actually at your halfway point, even though you don't appear to be at this moment. Well, you're close to the halfway point. So there should be something for everything as you go around. Now make sure if there's stragglers, that this was on the bottom when we first started, we want to tuck that straggler into the interior of the, of the hat there, so that it will permanently be inside the brim. And if it's not, like this one here doesn't seem to be wanting to cooperate with me, but um, we can pull it further inside the more we go into this project as well. We could do it at the very end as well. And voila. You've now just successfully cast it on. So, so, so you've now just done the brim. So now what we're going to do is just move your blue out of the way. And now this is exactly what you need to do. Now, you cannot change the order of what you're about to do. Okay, you have two strings. You have three on the first one because it was the one that was casting off. You have one blue and you have the red and white from the brim. So what we want to do is take the blue only and tuck it over. And now you want to take the entire bottom, which is the three blue or three white, and then put that over the edge. And it can sometimes be a little difficult, um, but you want to be a little bit gentle because if you break a peg, your project is done. So there you go. So again, so don't change the order. If you change the order of what I'm showing you right now, you are totally going to regret it. So taking the blue first and then the bottom white. The blue is not visible on the outside of this project. So if, if you change the order uh, where that blue goes over, you will see it. And so you'll then have this beautiful line of just mismatched white and blue 
just like totally slopping up your work. That is the, I guess, the major default to loom knitting is that if you make a mistake, you really can't go backward. So you need to make sure that you catch it right away. So just continue to go along around the brim, blue and then white, and we'll catch back up with you in, in just a, on the next rotation. So keep going. So now up. it is casted on, your brim is now formed as you can see, and now we're going to start our blue. So now between 1 and 13, this is exactly what you're going to do, what I'm going to show you now. So it's just a double wrap, this is how hard this is, just double wrap yourself with the blue. Just going around. So you only have 13 lines to do, so this one here, will, once you've done it, it will be row number 1 out of 13. So just got to keep going. So make sure you do wrap your loom twice, that's why I call it double wrapping. Okay, and then out, and then take the bottom up and over. So this will be row no once you've done this, row number one, and then just continue to row number 13, and then we'll cast off together to form so the we're top. We've nearly done our project. We just did our 13 rounds off camera, and um, what we're going to do now is casting off. So let's take our styler pen and just slide it down. And we want about two uh, feet of string. So let's cut it with our nifty scissors. And what we got is this uh, needle that comes with our packs, and we're just going to slip that on. These needles are really easy to use. And uh, now we're going to start, you just want to kind of double it up a little bit to prevent it from tangling. So now what we got to do, whoops, I forgot to cast off the very last one. I was so excited that I was done. So, so what we want to do now is that we want to, this is where we, cast, we finished off right here, so we want to move to the very next one, and we want to slip our needle in from the bottom of the of the loom, okay, and moving away t up to the hook. It makes a difference because this won't get tangled. So all the string is just going to come on through, and what we want to do now is just pull that off of the peg, just like so. So let's go to the next one. So we want to go all the way around, coming from the bottom up, like so, and continue to go each one. So we're just going to go. So we're just going to keep going. So it's easier if you hold your loom upside down because the string that you're using to pull through, if you put it the other way, the string gets caught in the pegs and it literally will really get on your nerves really quickly. These are a really quick uh, project. I had one lady email me and she is living on a base, an army base, and apparently she's had a newborn or she's having one and she was so excited because she has so much pride for her country and her man is serving in the, the military at this time and so she decided to make nine hats all in one day. So I just think, wow. So. She's making them for her friends and etc. who are on the base with her. So I think it's pretty brilliant. That's the power of creativity, just being able to share it. So thought I'd share that with you. There is uh, three versions of the American hat. This is actually filming of number two. I have yet to film one more. And the patterns for all three are available at mikeysmail.com if you want to jump ahead and you don't need me to show you how to do it. So it's all free and uh, we're now on iTunes so one of these is apparently already on iTunes for you to grab so it's a 36 minute uh, tutorial and we take you right through the scratch of just like we did with this one we take you through the, the beginning right to the end so I find this craft really fun I really like doing, the, the most favorite part of it is making the brim for me. I just, I don't know, I just get off on that. So we're almost all the way around. 
And the reason why you're coming from the bottom too, I say it just to do it, and don't question me on it. Uh, what happens is these are loops that you're putting on there. When you come up and go the other way, it turns the loops backwards, so therefore they get tangled and the string does not travel uh, through it when you go to pull it all shut. So that's the method to my madness. So two more to go. There we go, last one off. It's gonna fall off, and just like so. We're gonna do that. Now using your fingers, now we're gonna just uh, cast off right on the, or sorry, we're gonna uh, begin to pull it off. So just use your fingers, kind of pinch it, but no, let the string go through it. I just pull, and it will form, and your hat will form four sections right at the top. Sometimes it does three, it all depends on its mood. So now it's nice and tight, so now I'm really pinching it hard. I'm taking the needle and I'm going on the opposite side to where it's come out. And I'm just sticking really close to the top. Now where you pulled everything together, the strings will be uh, pretty tight. So it's not always easy to get in there. But because you're using the blue string on this blue, it's virtually impossible to see. So let's pull that through. And we're going to pull it nice and tight. So yeah, it did form four sections. So now what I want to do is pull it tight again. I just now jump. I'm going to jump on the diagonal here going from one side to another. I'm going to stick close to the top. Now let's go there and pull. Now I'm going to come diagonally uh, through this side and go straight across. So I keep going straight across every time. And you can do that as long as you feel secure. I'm just going to go one more time. I don't know who's going to wear this so I don't know how rough they're going to be on it. Across. And now what we want to do, stick your needle straight down the center, okay, and let's turn your hat inside out. So your needle's going to come out through, and now what we're going to just do is just slide it under a few strings, but don't slide it all the way through the material. You just want to catch a few strings, and then stick your needle back through a string and pull it like a, t a tie, and then do that twice. Or do it three times, whatever you feel more comfortable doing. And now that's done. So what we need to do is cut it. You could do a little better job than that. Just, and there you go. There is your American hat. Now, don't you don't have to stop here. You can go even further. On my tutorials, there is a crochet star that you can do uh, to put onto the top to accessorize it. Or on my tutorials as well, if you want to create a pom-pom, I've taught you how to do that. And the third kind that's not yet done on the tutorial. And you can see where I screwed up on the, on the brimming. And that's because I never followed the order like I talked about of the red and the white uh, being properly aligned with each other. That's exactly what happens. So it sticks out like a really sore thumb when you don't pay attention to closing off your brim. So these are the American hats and I think they're brilliant. So there you go. Enjoy.